Welcome to Panzercar 2, folks. I'm a nerdy old gamer, or Nog for short, and we are starting a brand new series today of Panzercar 2, which just released uh, on the 19th of April, so two days ago. I have been waiting for this game for quite a while. It's uh, it's the well, it's obviously number the successor to Panzercar, which is came out like five or six years ago, I think. And Panzer Corps was the successor to Panzer General, which uh, came out in 1994. Panzer General, I have played to death. It's probably one of the games that I have played the most ever. I absolutely love that game, and I felt like Panzer Corps didn't really live up to Panzer General. Uh, I didn't feel like it had evolved enough from Panzer General in 1994 to Panzer Corps in, in what, 2000 and, 2015 or 14 or something, 14 I think. So I have high hopes for Panzer Corps 2 and we are going to start a new game. And we are going to skip the tutorial, I don't need it, and we're going to go straight into the campaign. So, Panzer Corps 2 is Second World War uh, turn-based strategy game where we play as the Germans. And there are several dis different uh, scenarios here. So, Poland 1939, Barbarossa 1941, North Africa 1941, Kursk 1943, and Italy 1943. Now. Poland 1939 is by far the longest scenario. We can see down here 20 to 23 scenarios, uh, or the longest campaign, I should say. Barbarossa, 14 to 17, North Africa, 14 to 17, and then Kursk and Italy, seven or eight uh, scenarios. So we're going to jump into Poland and play through the whole war. Now, we have the difficulty levels here. So it starts as Major, Colonel, General, Field Marshal Generalissimus. Okay, I don't think that was a, a rank in the German army, but okay. Um, we're going to play on Colonel difficulty. That is the default difficulty, uh, just to see how it goes. Uh, we can increase the difficulty during the campaign in between scenarios. So if we feel like it's too easy, maybe we'll do that. In the advanced options, we have the option to, where is it, custom army, here, custom army. If checked, you'll be able to purchase and deploy your own army at the beginning of the game instead of the predefined starting force. I am going to do that because I'd like to determine which units I'll have instead of the game determining it for me in the, in the first scenario. If you do go w without custom army, you'll get a few tanks uh, or a few panzers, uh, some infantry units, uh, I think uh, an artillery and uh, a little bit of air. But I think I'll I'll make my own uh, army uh, set up. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, click play. So, as a newly minted uh, general in the German Wehrmacht, it falls upon you to spearhead the German invasion of Poland and prove your mettle in combat. Always choose your avenue of assault wisely, as future decisions will dramatically impact your campaign and even the course of the war. Strategic warning. Uh, so we have two scenarios here, Poland South or Poland North. More close quarters combat and sieges in the southern route. More mobile and open ground warfare in the northern route. I think we'll go with, with North, try that out. I like the idea of mobile and open ground. So, in Pentacore 2, you get uh, X number of units depending on how many uh, command points you have. And these can be upgraded and uh, they can gain experience, you can overstrength them and so on. 
and you of course need to set up a, a decent uh, composition of, of units. Now here we need to select some strength and some weaknesses or some weaknesses. So we don't need to, we have two selections remaining. So we can see here that infantry, infantry, Jesus, infantry general, all infantry units, infantry units cost 25% less slots. So you have so and so many uh, unit slots that you can use and depending on the unit they can cost uh, one slot, two slot, three slots, four slots, etc. So this could actually be quite useful to, to get either infantry or panzer general. Then we have industry connections gets 15 or 20 random prototypes in every mission except the first. So prototypes works like uh, you have, let's say you have these uh, Panzer 2 C's and Panzer 1 B's that we can see here on the field. Uh, then in between each scenario, maybe you'll get one that is a little bit more advanced uh, that you can purchase or upgrade your current tanks to. However, prototypes cannot really be reinforced. So that is kind of a trade-off. So if your prototype unit takes casualties, you can't reinforce them and you won't be able to do so until that unit actually goes into production, into normal production. So you could have several scenarios where you have a a unit that has taken heavy heavy casualties that you can't actually use because it's just going to get destroyed the first time it gets into combat because it's so under strength and you can't reinforce it. A liberator plus 50% prestige for capturing flags. A little bit weird liberator as the Germans. Deep recon map around all primary objectives is permanently revealed plus 5% accuracy bonus from all recon units, okay? Operational initiatives, all units get plus three, four, three, and two initiative for three, on the first three turns. Uh, Master of Blitzkrieg, all tanks get plus one movement point and cross minor rivers easier. That sounds quite nice. Uh, Battle Academy, plus 25 experience uh, growth rate. Gets additional auxiliary slots in every battle equal to 50% from available core slots. Okay. And trophies of war. Gets double the captured equipment and double the prestige when forcing enemy units to surrender. So if you capture enough of the enemy equipment, then you can actually field that equipment against them. And a deadly grasp. Encircled enemy units suffer double penalty, flexible command. Splitting units does not consume unit slots. Also, any unit can split and merge any number of times in a single turn. I've, I played a little bit last night just to get to know the get to know the mechanics, and I don't really see use for splitting so far. So that we're definitely not getting that. So basically, this is a new function in Panzer Corps 2 that you can split uh, a unit in two. So if you have a 10 strength unit of tanks here, you can split that in two. So you have two units of five. A killer team starts the game with three additional heroes. Uh, heroes, they you get a hero or... Uh, I don't know if you can get multiple heroes. I never tried that. But you get a hero after each scenario. I don't even know if you always get one, but so far I played three scenarios, I think, and I got one each time. And the hero comes with some sort of trait that can could give you uh, like a uh, higher chance of getting uh, enemy units to surrender, a uh, higher chance of overrunning enemy units and stuff like that. And air veteran, 
And the air units inflict outright kills. A yeah, friendly unit in a hex cancels enemy zone of control in that hex. Okay. And then we have all the weaknesses, and these are really nasty. Uh, so minus 10% core slots, no way. I need all the core slots I can get my hands on. Cannot give overstrength to units. That could be okay, but overstrength units are so much more powerful that I don't think I want to do that. Denied Air Force, can't purchase air units, that is just crazy. No artillery units. Uh, gets new equipment six months later than normal. That is also just crazy. Elite replacements are limited to three times per mission. Also insane. Cannot use replacements in the middle of the battle. That is also insane. Uh, more breakdowns. Uh, spends two points of ammo on each attack instead of one. That is also not nice. Inefficient supply, units get reduced supply at the beginning of the turn. Any units can three, freely move through zone of control, no thank you. Bad luck, combat results can never be better than predicted. That also sucks because they can be worse. So yeah, these can be really nasty. I think we are going to go with Panzer General. Uh, oh wait, I have two. Oh, that costs two. Uh, I thought it only cost one. Hmm. So I would like the Master of Blitzkrieg. Uh. Uh. Don't really want any of those. You know what, I think I'm going to go with Panzer General. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We need a name. We're going to be... What are we going to be? Uh, we will call ourselves Rommel von Manstein. I don't know if I'm spelling Manstein correctly. I don't think I am. Uh, but... I think it's actually like that. I don't know. Rommel von Menstein. A little bit of combination of two of the more famous German generals. So, accept. I salute your impeccable timing here, General. My telephone call with High Command just finished. Now that the invasion of Poland is imminent, we need to discuss your role in Operation Falvice. During these briefings, I will be your primary link to the directives coming from High Command. While my time on the battlefield may be long past, I can still offer you important insights alongside your orders. Now then, on to the business at hand. As you can see, we're deploying your new Panzer Corps to Yesso to combine with elements of Kuji's 4th Army. Your immediate objective is to cut the density corridor by advancing to the Vistula River. Our move to leave Germany and East Prussia is an obvious one. That our enemy will surely predict. But I expect the speed of your advance to take them by surprise, allowing you to intercept their forces before they reach more defensible positions. To fully take control of the corridor, these two major crossings of the Shula must be occupied. If you see the opportunity, crossing the Shula here and flank the Ruva could make taking your objectives much easier. Good luck on your first combat operation, Major General. I would hate for it to be your last. Thank you very much. I thought I would get to choose my own units. Damn it. Didn't I select that? I thought I selected that. Oh, it said deployment. So I guess I can... Is this... Okay, so we are... going to get to do that it's just set up the the standard first but we can sell all that and I think yeah. and uh, and make our own so let's see what we have we have uh, 7.5 centimeter artillery 10.5 centimeter artillery we have some pioneers 
bear infantry you can see down here in the left corner what it is that I am looking at and some more bear infantry a recon unit which in Panzer General and Panzer Corps they really sucked in my opinion but they actually have a really good use in uh, in Panzer Corps 2 because if you have a recon unit next to another unit when it attacks it's get it gets higher accuracy meaning that more of their attacks will be effective which is really cool then we have a 1b a 2c two bf 109s and a stuka it's actually a okay deployment Let's try undeploying everything and see if we want to do anything differently. Actually, forget that. Uh, undeployed. So, can I? No, I can move to reserves and I can disband. And it recovers its prestige costs, so I could do that. So let's see, what units could we buy? We have two core slots left. So up here you can see we have, we're using 34 of 36 core slots. Uh, and down here we can see this one costs one core slot. Cavalry costs three, Pioneers costs four and so on and we have tanks they these tanks actually only cost two which isn't half bad so we could get a panzer 38 tons could also get another recon unit which i am seriously considering anti-tank Anti-air. Anti-air is generally not very good. In well, it wasn't in, in Panzer General and Panzer Corps, but I haven't tried it in Panzer Corps Two because I never really felt that it was that good. Uh, artillery is really nice though, but I would want 10.5 centimeter or 15 centimeter. So if we look at, uh, for instance, this 15 centimeter, we can see over here it costs 260, costs four slots, has 10 max strength, doesn't use fuel, five max ammo. In Panzer Corps II, your units are, re are resupplied automatically in between uh, turns, so you don't have to think about supply as you did in uh, Panzer General and Panzer Corps. Well, not as much anyway, because you still can run out of ammo if you get attacked six times. You won't be able to return fire and on the sixth one, right? Uh, so it has 18 and 21. 18 soft attack, 21 hard attack, no air attack, naval attack, one. It can move one movement type uh, so this is like wheel or tracked or foot or whatever uh, range can shoot three tiles has three initiative has a sixth ground defense three air defense uh, no close defense close defense is like uh, some tiles can be marked that they are close combat and then we have spotting one and target type soft. And then if we hover over the 7.5 centimeter, then we can compare it. So I am actually considering upgrading my 7.5 centimeter to a 15 centimeter. Because 15 centimeter is just better. We have fighters, we only have the 109s now, and we have 
uh, dive bombers or tactical bombers, so we can we could get a 110C as well. The 87B is too expensive, and then the Stork doesn't have any attack or anything. It's only a recon plane. Then we have strategic bombers, uh, the Henkel and the Donia. So yeah. Okay. Um, I think uh, let's uh, close this. We'll deploy these tanks again. And then I think this uh, 7.5 we will... Why can't I upgrade? I can't upgrade. Upgrade to a 15 centimeter. And as you can see here, it will cost us two uh, deployment points and 210 uh, prestige. We have 500 prestige, you can see up here. And the reason that it only costs 210 instead of 260 plus 100 down here, so that would be 360, is because the one that we had, uh, it has a horse transport already and it costs, what, 200 and no. Well, heck is, oh, we can't see what its initial cost was. But we're only paying the difference in cost from the 7.5 centimeter to the 15 centimeter. So we're going to upgrade that. And that make, gives us much, much better uh, uh, artillery. So I think that ends our deployment phase. So let's go ahead and end deployment. Okay, so in general, I'll try to keep these episodes at around half an hour. Uh, this first one will go a little bit longer because it's already been going for like 20 minutes and we haven't even started a battle yet. Uh, but that's because there's a lot of explaining to do in episode one, right? So we can see here that these towns are marked with a circle. That means that they provide supply. And this is the only place that we can, around around these towns, is the only place that we can deploy new units if we want to deploy, deploy new units during the scenario. And uh, we also need to keep in mind that we need to have access to one of these at all times when we move forward so we don't run, run out of supply. So I am guessing that this supply mark goes for our enemy as well. They have the circle. So I'm guessing that they can only deploy troops in these supply towns as well. These towns marked where the whole entire hex is kind of indicated. Those are our main objectives of the mission and we need to take all of them in order to win the scenario. So let's see what we have here. We have some uh, anti-tank and then we have some infantry up here. Infantry up here. You can see here we have a 10 underneath this tank unit and a 15 underneath this infantry unit and that's their total strength. Infantry units comes with a 15 strength and tank units come or panzer units come with a 10 strength. Now when we hover over this uh, anti-tank we can see that we are going to do three damage to it. We're not going to take any damage, the zero on the left side, and we're going to do three damage if everything goes as planned. But the number three is blue, which means that we're not going to do any physical damage, we're not going to take out any units, we're going to suppress them, meaning that they will not be able to fight if, if we attack them, then they will only have a strength of seven when fighting instead of a strength of ten. So I think we're going to bombard those. And we actually did one uh, physical damage, so we took down one strength. And we also suppressed three of them. If we select that here, we can see it has three suppression. Its strength is nine out of ten. It has an entrenchment of one. All terrain has some kind of entrenchment, and you can't get a unit below that uh, uh, default uh, entrenchment that the terrain has, so I'm guessing that this terrain has a one entrenchment. Okay. 
So we suppressed that so it basically only has a strength of six now. So if we attack with the pioneers here, we will take one suppression damage and we'll destroy two of them if things go as planned. They can go better, they can go worse, and or they can go as planned. Uh, but we do have some air units that we probably want to use. Uh, I want to select you. Um, <clears throat> let's send you up here and bombard. Destroying three of them and also suppressing two. Not bad. Then we'll send you over here to support that fighter or that uh, Stuka. This is our Stuka, JU-87B. And then we'll send this BF-109 down here and strafe the anti-tank. Taking out two more and they still have three suppressed. So now they only have a strength of four. So we'll move forward here. These pioneers are really good at attacking towns and stuff like that. Okay, we push them back. Not bad. They won't be able to retaliate here because they are, well, they do have one, but that's not gonna do much. We're going to send you up here and push them back the other way. Oh, we overran them, nice. Now, when we overrun, if we still have movement points left, if we didn't use the full movement, let's take this one as an example. If we only moved here and attacked a unit here, for instance, and we overran, then we'd still have three movement points left after the attack. Uh, if you don't overrun, then you don't get that. Uh, so we will move this tank up here. And we'll move this tank up here. So now we've encircled these guys, which is nice. And then we'll move our artillery up here and just harass them a little bit more. They have five uh, suppression, so they only have a strength of six right now. Now, if we attack here, we have mass attack, which means that this thing gives supporting fire, fire means that, meaning that we're more effective in our attack, which is good. Okay. And then maybe you can take it out. Yes, you could, and you overran, meaning that we can push forward with this guy. And I think we will do that. Uh, where do we want to go? Hmm. I think we'll push over here. Alrighty. Now our recon down here. I think we'll move down here to see what they have. They have a recon vehicle of their own. Okay, we'll move straight up to them. Now, these guys don't have... Okay, that's something that we need to fix after this scenario. Because these guys and these guys don't have trucks. And we definitely want them to have trucks so that they can move a bit faster. We'll move these guys out. And then we'll move you out. I think we'll move you down this way as well. We'll send these guys over that way. And then we'll send... Wait, this is a uh, bear infantry, yeah. These guys we'll send over that way to take the city up here. It's not uh, a victory condition that we take it, but... We get prestige for taking it, and prestige is, is basically money. So we need to earn as much prestige as we can during a scenario. So taking as many uh, cities and stuff uh, is crucial to, to earning uh, in prestige. And also, the faster we win a scenario, the bigger a bonus we get after the scenario is over. So right now we're getting a 105% bonus, uh, but that will go down once uh, this, the, we go through the turns. We have 15 turns to complete the scenario. Okay, what do we have left? We have you left, 
and we have you left you can so here we can see this thing can get mounted up it has a it actually has a half track and if we mount it up then over here it won't be able to dismount because it's spent all or so much of its moving points that it won't have time to dismount but if there's this little triangle next to to, to the icon then it means that it will move over there and dismount immediately you generally don't want to have units mounted up when it's the enemy's turn because mounted units are much more vulnerable to attack both from uh, land and uh, air forces and will take significantly more casualties usually anyway so i think we'll move this 15 centimeter i don't want you to be able to let's see Actually, we could just move it down here so that next time it'll be able to bombard that. I think that works. And we have you left and that's it. And I don't want to attack right now. So we are just going to end the turn. Okay, here comes the, the Polish Air Force. Did a bit of suppression damage there. Suppressed two of our tanks. Oh, there's a... Okay, so we have some cavalry up here, some infantry. We have that thing which killed four of our pioneers, which sucks. And then we have... Uh, a Polish... Uh, well, that, that, that's a strategic bomber. So I think we'll send our fighters down here and attack now you may have noticed that my air units moved back to the airfield that we have here now that's because they are based out of that airfield and this is a new mechanic in uh, in panzer corps uh, 2 as well that the fighters automatically move back uh, to the um, to the airfield that they're uh, deployed to at the beginning of your turn before you could leave them out and kind of uh, attack several times over several turns before having to move back but that's not the case now they will always move back to the airfield that they are assigned to and you can rebase them down here so if I wanted it assigned to that I could do that but I don't so uh, let's see, what do we want to attack? I think we'll go deal with you. Alright, five, nice. Now, can you get in range? You can. So let's... Okay. So they're heavily suppressed. Five suppression. And they took a bit of casualties as well. Very nice. Now, you can... Do a bit of damage to them. They have four suppression. So they only have a strength of three right now. So I think we'll let's see. One, two, one, two, zero, three. I like that a lot better. Alright, we push them back. Zero two. Uh, let's actually move you up here and take that. Zero two, nice. And then you can move in and finish it off. Good, good. And you can come up here. This one will move up this way to help with these guys. And our recon will send in here to grab that town. That's a nice thing about recon units that they can move and take the town and then move again so we'll move up next to Bugok here 
and see what they have in there. They have a anti-tank. So I think we'll pull back a little bit so the anti-tank doesn't have a free shot at our uh, recon unit. Okay, now up here, zero five. I kind of like those odds. Very nice. So he is basically dead. Let's see. One five, zero three, zero three one five. So it doesn't matter. So we'll just move you up here, finish those guys off, and then we'll move you up here and finish those guys off. Well, not finish them off. Ouch. That was not the result that we were looking for. What do we have left? You. Ah, uh, you overran. Nice. So let's attack again. We are not doing as well as we would like against those guys. Let's move up here and encircle them. So encirclement is a little bit weird in uh, Panzer Corps 2. I'm not entirely sure I understand what it means. But basically, these guys can only move one tile now. So they can't get out of our zone of control. And I think that's what it means. Okay, you. You can't attack, but you can move up. So let's move you up here, just so that this one doesn't get hit by a 15 strength unit. You are fine, sleep one turn, and that's the end of turn two. Alrighty. Oh, little tank there. Okay, they did get attacked by them, but it's fine. So their tank did two damage and they lost four tanks themselves so that wasn't a very good attack for them move mass attack here all right overrun nice move down here and then we can mass attack again because it's an overrun we can attack once more cool and we'll move you over here and attack So you can't get there now. We'll move in and take out a few more of their tanks. And let's move you forward up this way. Oh, I forgot about those guys. Damn it. Okay. Well, uh, we will send our Stuka. It's hard to see the difference here, but you can if you look closely. I think we'll take you out. Finish you off. Oh man. You were supposed to finish it off. And we'll do a bit of suppression on this guy. And we'll do a strafe on this guy. Alright. Now you can move in and do a bit more suppression. And then you can move in and you can move in. So zero four, zero six, okay. I guess we'll take zero six. Alrighty. One, two, one, two. So yeah, so this anti-tank is not great for us with the units that we have available available but okay nice took it out that means you can take that and you can take that and you can see the victory objective there gave a hundred the airfield down here gave 50 uh, prestige so not half bad Okay, what do we have left? We have you left. Uh, you can move up here. It didn't get to unload. We can undo this, but it can only get here if we want it to unload. 
And I don't think they have any other air units than that one that was decimated completely. So we'll just move it up here behind. And then there's you. I don't want to do a 5-5. Five five. Let's move across the river and see what's here. In general, we have a Polish, Polish regular infantry. And that's it for this turn. On to turn for oh, oh. A tank. 2-2, two, two. that's not too bad. We do need to reinforce our tank soon. Nice. But he might take it out. Nope, he didn't. Whew. That was close. That was close. But he left the security of the forest, which is nice. Now we can do a little bombard here. One five. Well, instead of taking that one five. Actually, we will take the one five and then we'll just go Bombard there. Well, we can do this. And then I think I'm going to rebase these guys. I am going to try to not side scroll because it's annoying to watch. I know that. But it's an old habit that I am trying to break. Uh, I think we'll rebase you down here. So if you are getting frustrated that I side scroll, I apologize. I know that it's annoying and I am trying to fix it. Uh, you. Let's see if we move you down here. And you can come in. Nice. We'll send you across the bridge as well, and you we will send up here on this side, together with the artillery. Where do we want the artillery? If we move forward two, then we can move forward one and attack in the next one. So that's fine. You definitely need to get reinforced, and we'll elite replace it because we don't want to lose the experience that they already have. That's especially true for, I'd say, tanks and, or, or panzers and uh, any, anything aerial, really. You don't want to lose that, but we're going to do this for all of them. You're going to take the one five. Not bad. So that we get these up to strength again. What do we have left? You. Hmm. Let's move up here. We have you. To move in here. So now if anything attacks one of these two units, well any land unit attacks these two units, the artillery will support fire. All right, that's it for this turn. That is optimistic. Wow, that was a suicide attack there. Ouch. They're really picking on that tank. Ooh, no, no, no. That was not part of my plans. That was definitely not part of my plans. You're gonna get punished for that. Jesus, that bike was loud. You in here and attack that a bit. And then we'll send you in here and start. Actually, no. We'll send you up here. 
and start working on that artillery. It's much better. Do over here. Ouch. We'll move you in here. And then I think we will give you some reinforcements. Two, two, that's not good. One, two. Zero, two. Now that, because this is artillery, even though they're in tiles next to each other, they cannot uh, return fire. Okay. And let's see if we can't overrun these guys. Yes, we could. Nice. And then we'll take you out. Overrun again, which means that we can take you out. Nice. Overrun again, and then we can move forward. Wow. That was nice. That was really, really nice. You can come up behind here. Now, you can... Why can't you attack? You have the range. You're not suppressed. Oh, you already attacked, didn't you? You already attacked. Okay, fair enough. I suppose. Seven two, no, thank you. Let's elite replace you again. Now it is cheaper to do all this replacing in between scenarios than it is during a scenario. So it's not very prestige effective to do it now, but I feel that we need at least some of our tanks to be battle worthy. Let's move up here and take out that artillery. And you can suppress there a bit. You can move up here, but we're not going to attack yet. Because I want you to come in here and do a bit of damage first. Now you can't reach, can you? No. So let's rebase down here. And we base you down here. And then we will move forward. Let's not move right up to them. Just in case they're units in front of the city. We'll move you back here. Oh, there was a unit there. Oh, one five, I'll take that. Now, you can come over this way. And... Hmm. I think I'll send you down this way. Uh, three, four isn't half bad. It isn't half bad. Do we want to take that? I don't think so. I don't think we need to. I'll pull you back because you took a bit of a beating. Hmm. I mean, 2-2 two, two isn't the worst. But if I don't need to take casualties with this guy, then I'd rather not. So we'll just sleep you for a turn. We can move forward one. All right, that's turn six. Oh, well, we did take casualties, but not too bad. And they attacked, which is nice. That uh, ruins their entrenchment a bit. Right, so you come in here, bombard you, suppress, 
So they have six suppression now, so that is really nice. Let's fire there and move in and take it. You can move over this way and attack that. And then you can hopefully finish them off. Nope. Damn it. You attack that. Nice. Move down there, and then you can finish them off. Okay, I don't think I want to move you just now. Let's move you in here. Attack. And then attack. Nice. Move up here, attack. Move up here and bombard. Okay. Not bad, not bad. You can come up here. You can do a little strafing run here. And you can do a strafing run here. Oh, nice. Took it out. We don't have to spend time on that. What's our bonus now? It's 36%. We'll move you up here. And you up here. And there's you, and that's it. Let's end the turn. And it's our turn immediately. So they didn't do any attacks or anything. Good. good. Bard there. Let's move up here and take out their remaining bomber there. Meaning that you can come up here and do a little strafing run. It's not very effective, but it will reduce their uh, entrenchment. So their entrenchment is six now. Uh, four two ouch four one well, I guess we'll have to take that those are not good odds man or two I think I'll wait on that uh, you can press a bit there you come up here uh, you come over here. Uh, you can come up this way. No, six five. That's a bit of an ouchie. And we're not going to end the battle this turn. So why not wait and do a bit more suppression and air attack on them. There's nothing else that we need to take on the map. Well, this up here. But other than that, so we'll just move you in there. We're not going to reinforce it or anything. Um, let's just end the turn they attacked those guys that hurt and it didn't hurt them which is annoying we'll take our stukas over here okay entrenchment down some more a bit more suppression we suppress them a bit more so three of their guys are suppressed um, let's, well, that's not what I wanted to do. Right, then let's just send you up here. Bombard. So they have four suppressed and their entrenchment is only four. So we should 
inflict more casualties than we take. We did not, I don't think. Okay, let's move up here. Okay, that pushed him out. So we took that. Let's move you up here. You need to take the bridge as well. You can see there's still a Polish flag here. You'll move up besides there. And there's you. You already did your thing. 3-5, I'll take that. All right, he got pushed out. We're not going to move into the city because that will end the battle. And we don't want to do that until we've taken the bridge as well. But that is everything killed except that guy. So let's... Actually, we have a fighter. We can just reach him. Might as well. Okay. You... Whoa, 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 whoa. Undo that. And we want our Stuka. Come up here and bombard. Nice. And then you can finish it off. There. You can move over here. Take that victory point. Now everything is on German hands. Meaning that we can move you in here. And end the scenario. Alright. Cool. We won. And... Here we have an overview of how effective our units were, so points killed and the cost, so and the kills losses ratio. I don't fully understand these statistics uh, that they're showing here. They're a little bit weird to me, but fine. So yeah, we won the battle, and that's good. As I said, this episode ran a little bit long because it takes a while to explain on the first episode uh, just to get any, everyone to understand what kind of game it is but we'll move on a bit faster uh, or well not a bit faster but we'll try to make the episodes around half an hour long if I can see that an and a scenario is almost done then I'll run a little bit longer but if I can see that there's a while to go until uh, I can win the scenario or lose uh, then I will cut the scenarios up in uh, into multiple uh, episodes but I hope you enjoyed uh, Pentacore 2 I freaking love this game and I can't wait to uh, yeah, to, to get into it some more. And I hope you'll uh, join me for it. I'll try to keep the series a little bit like a tutorial series as much as I can. Uh, so that you can maybe get some ideas of uh, inspiration. But that is going to be it for this episode, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why not leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.